What's up everybody, welcome back to The Hez Project, I'm John Ortolaza, and today we're talking about Spider-Man Homecoming, the first Tom Holland film as the web crawler. We've already covered the Tobey Maguire trilogy, the Andrew Garfield duology, and we're still on the road to Spider-Man No Way Home. By the way, if you guys got your tickets, let me know down below. That was a very gruesome and nail-biting experience. But to quickly rant about these movie theater websites, they've had years to upgrade their software, so I don't understand why so much traffic causes all of these problems, not being able to sign back in, pages not loading, internet just shattering. <laughs> like, it's ridiculous. You've had years. YouTube handles so many video requests daily and doesn't do this. <laughs> so, fix yourself. We're talking Spider-Man Homecoming, the first film starring Tom Holland. It's not his first appearance as the character. He did first appear in Captain America Civil War the year prior, and then he got his own solo film the next year. This film, I do enjoy. I really enjoy. It is a fun time. I don't want to be the one who ranks the movies, because I know you're going to complain yeah, that it doesn't align with your rankings. All I can tell you is that Spider-Man 3 and The Amazing Spider-Man 2 are the bottom two. Don't ask me which one is above the other. Tom Holland is probably my favorite Spider-Man of the three for this one reason. He embodies the character of Peter Parker and Spider-Man and meshes those two worlds and characters together better than I've seen Toby and Andrew do. And that's not to say that they did it in a poor way. You can clearly go watch my opinion about how I feel about their Peter Parkers or Pete <laughs> in Andrew's case in the first film because he's very much a departure of what Peter Parker is known for. But this film really does embody that childlike nature of Peter Parker better than the other films ever could. Those Sam Raimi films feel like the Superman of Spider-Man. You know what I mean? They feel so dramatic and suspenseful. It doesn't feel like Tobey Maguire could have been that Spider-Man from the comics. It doesn't feel like he could have been that super quirky guy. Of course, he made quirky remarks here and there, but I'm not saying I want him to just say quirky, funny things for the hell of it, but it just comes across as more genuine for a high school character when Tom Holland's on screen. It really does. Moving on to Pete's friends, MJ and Ned in this film, they feel like they are high school students. They embody that high school vibe. They look very young too. They're definitely in their mid-20s for sure, but I mean, so were Andrew and Toby. They were 27 and they're both their first films and they definitely stood out. There was a quality about them, a quality that they still have that they reached full-on adulthood to me. Like Their faces and their bodies, they just look like adults to me, and they always have. But Tom's got a baby face, dude. <laughs> he really does. I even mentioned this way back in the year when I reviewed his film Cherry, Ugh. the film directed by the Russo brothers, uh, unfortunately, <laughs> and that was supposed to be Tom Holland's, you know, breakout role as this adult character trying to be taken more seriously, but man, I all I just saw was this high school kid. He has the reverse effect of Toby, I think. Toby looks like an adult, but then you got the one guy on the subway train in Spider-Man 2 who sees Peter with a mask off and he says, he's just a kid. No older than my son. Stop lying! The dude's like five years younger than you! What I like about the Spider-Man films is that none of them really reboot any of the villains off rip and just make them like the villain again. We do get New Goblin in Spider-Man 3, but that was part of the story. That was Harry, and we, we did get Dane de Hoblin, <laughs> but that he wasn't the main villain. It was Electro for that film, and we'd never seen Electro at that point before. Homecoming introduces Vulture, played by Michael Keaton, and we've never seen Vulture before on the big screen, so that's a big plus right there. Also, you got Michael Keaton, someone who's a really good actor. He can't forget about that. He played Batman in 1989, and then Batman Returns. He, really good. He's got some pedigree, and he's no stranger to the comic book world. So it was a welcoming addition to the Spider-Man movies and the Marvel Cinematic Universe to have Michael Keaton in that world and playing around with those characters. He's just so menacing, dude. I would put him up there with William Dafoe's Green Goblin. In my honest opinion, I think he's just that damn good. Especially in that whole sequence where Pete finds out that 
this dude, uh, Adrian Toomes, that's his name, he's the father of the girl he's taking to prom. So he knocks on her door, finds out it's him, and it's just this whole awkward exchange. Like, Pete does not know what to do. And Adrian hasn't figured out that Pete is Spider-Man yet, so it's just such a fun, awkward scenario. I loved how it played out throughout the entire sequence. Adrian offers to drive his daughter and Pete to the prom, and he's asking Pete all these questions in the car. Peter's just sweating, dude, doesn't know what to do. He's like, oh my god, he's the bad guy. I gotta stop him. He, he had previously caught Adrian as the bad guy involved with all these, you know, very wacky guns being <laughs> given out to random people. Like, he's got so much tech that he found and created himself based off of you know old Stark tech and Chitari tech left from the Battle of New York. Really cool tie-ins to the previous films and lore that the MCU has set up. I really did appreciate that. I just love everything about this scene where Adrian is slowly figuring out and piecing together that Peter is Spider-Man. His daughter's talking to Peter in the back seat and she says, oh, you were at my party, but you left. You always leave, just like in Washington where you left. And she mentions these two moments where Spider-Man was active at those exact times and he's just like, oh, okay. And then a red traffic light emits all over his face. It was just a really cool detail to implement inside the cinematography rather than just overcomplicating the dialogue. And right when his daughter leaves, says, I want to have a word with Pete, turns around with a gun and says, so you're Spider-Man, huh? <laughs> like, you figured it out. We saw you figure it out. He didn't have to say that. He just pulls out the gun and he says, does she know? And then it's just this really great dialogue from Michael Keaton to Tom Holland. I love this scene. It's really great. And Michael Keaton's probably one of my favorite villains so far in the MCU. And it's a shame we haven't seen him more in the films. He kind of just got arrested, put into prison at the end of this one, and then nothing. I do want to address something that's been going around the internet since this film came out, and that's Iron Boy, or Spider Boy, whatever you want to call him. It's Tom Holland Spider-Man being this second to Iron Man, like being his Iron Lad, being the guy who just relies on Iron Man. Look, that's what the, that's what the MCU is. It's adapting the comic stories, not beat for B. We've seen that several times, movies changing the comic book stories. And we see that with Tony Stark and Iron Man. That was the first film that Marvel bet all of their chips on and it worked. So they built a foundation on that character and on that film he is a legacy character in the movies and he's a weapons manufacturer he was at least you know very popular one and it illustrates in that first movie that other people realized that he is such a good weapons manufacturer his company was and they wanted to steal his stuff and replicate it and that's what's been happening they illustrated that in the first iron man film from 2008 and it's still been happening ever since for years and years so don't get mad when you see someone with an arc reactor in the trailer spider-man no way home all i'm saying is people who complain that spider-man feels like a iron boy in a second to iron man because He's got some of his tech, and you see Iron Man quite a bit. It just feels like you watch the trailer, because, yeah, they marketed the hell out of Spider-Man and Iron Man being on screen together. Of course they did. But they missed the point of the film. They missed the point that this is low-level Spider-Man. He has not been graduated to top-level hero. He literally just became Spider-Man and started saving the world to the public in just right before the events of Civil War. Like, he was just a YouTube persona. He was just seen on low-quality videos on YouTube, so there is going to be a big difference between Tom Holland Spider-Man and the grand Spider-Man that we got with Toby and Andrew. They were full-on heroes. This is Spider-Man building up his reputation with the world, and I liked how they did it in here. There's just little bits of metaphors that maybe I'm reading too much into it, but I, I think I think they stand. Spider-Man swinging across the suburbs with ranch-style houses and the tallest things in those neighborhoods are trees. And the one big structure that he climbs in this film is the Washington Monument when they went on the field trip and all of the cameras are pointing towards him and he's afraid of heights. It illustrates that he's afraid of taking that next step, although he wants to. And he's trying to tell Tony throughout the film that I can do this, I'm not a kid anymore. He says that I'm not a kid anymore in that one scene where he's in the, the hotel room with Ned and he immediately stands on the bed and starts hopping on it like a kid. <laughs> so in this film, 
Tom Holland's Spider-Man, his Peter Parker, is not ready to be a hero. He does make some big decisions on his own, I'll give him that. He turns down the Avengers, he takes down Vulture on his own, but... He is still a kid at heart. That's why I love this movie. That's why I appreciate this film. It does do something different with the character of Spider-Man and Peter Parker, and it tells that story through a much more engaging lens than I think Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire's films have. I, I do love those films for what they are, and I appreciate them, and I, I grew up with them. I can't just turn my back on them because... I kind of gravitate towards Spider-Man Homecoming a little bit more, and I gravitate towards Tom Holland's depiction of the character a little more. I can't turn my back on those. Those are legacy titles in my head, but you gotta give them props, dude. And I appreciate what they're doing, and as long as it's leading in the direction where I think, you know, once we start to see him move away from swinging in the suburbs to the big skyscrapers that we see Toby and Andrew swinging in, then I think that ideal of Tom Holland Spider-Man being a big player and doesn't need a father figure like Iron Man or Doctor Strange like we're gonna see in Spider-Man No Way Home, I think we're finally going to adjust and we're going to accept Tom Holland as our new Spider-Man. We still have, I have, but a lot of people, the people who are complaining, I think they'll turn their heads on it as well. Quick shouts real quick, visual effects are great. There are some little shots that I'm just, you know, like it's MCU, they're, they're, they have a certain style to them and it can appeal and it can work 100% of the time or it can work 90% of the time. I think Michael Giacano's score, I believe I said his name right, I apologize if I didn't, but his score is great. I've come to really appreciate Michael Giacano's scores in films. I think he did some of the Planet of the Apes which I love those films. We can talk about those at some point in the future. But I love the theme of this film and it really does encapsulate that vibe that Tom Holland has. Something that we just got hints of with Toby and Andrew. So guys, that is my review for Spider-Man Homecoming from 2017. Let me know down below, have you seen the film? And what did you think about it? Where do you put it? between all the other Spider-Man films, comparing it just to the first Toby and Andrew films. Let me know down below what's your favorite. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Stick around because I'm going to be reviewing Spider-Man Far From Home next week and then No Way Home is the week after. Spoiler talks. There's a lot of content coming to the channel, a lot of Spidey content, and there's always more to come.